We have some samples here that have pyrite and quartz. And they are pulled from this area here. So we're on uh, a new area at the Lucky Strike property and we're exposing a nice little oxidized area here where there's some pyrotization. Looks like there's a couple kinds of rock here. Sheared gray basaltic rock. There's a, uh, a bluish grayish volcanics. And you have your oxidized area. And as you can see, you have uh, loads of pyrite in these samples. There's a decent amount of pyrite in these, but under the loop I don't see too much of anything else. We will still, however, take a sample and bag it, tag it for future analysis if necessary. So the showing we were just at is about 100 meters down that road, and uh, you can see we're pretty high up here. We're a ways away from the camp, new camp, uh, Lucky Strike, copper showing. Those are way down below. Most of them are near the main road area. Down there is the Little Nitnat River flowing through there. And right near that is where the road is going around the backside of this mountain right here. Again, not too far away. Looks like uh, we've come across a shear, and you can see the oxidation all over the rocks. Looks like uh, you have a fracture right in there. But there's loads of oxidation, and you have your pyrotized rock here. Similar to that first little showing. Everything seems pretty sporadic here. But there's definite mineralization. Disseminated iron pyrite. So this rock actually looks pretty similar to what you see down at the camp showing area. The host rock. Sort of looks like a uh, gray silicus unit, but I think it's actually quartz that's gray. Very minute amount of iron pyrite in the more solid stuff. This had more pyrite than this up here. Nonetheless, an interesting structure. Way up here, close to the top of the mountain. Another small little area here. You can see that there's a definite change in your host rock from here 
to here. Same with over here and there. Give you a close up. This is definitely a very silicious rock. We're now about uh, 200 meters past where that last showing was. And we're pretty close to the top side of the mountain. It's fairly steep. Some of these logging roads you can get on here, a lot of them are overgrown. But the uh, camp and copper showings are pretty far that way now. Another little interesting area behind me, this bluish rock here contains disseminated iron pyrite. And here you have a gray silicous rock beside it and it's uh, Looks like it's got some epidotization. So these are just uh, samples I found laying on the ground. But what it looks like is it comes from right here. Same rock type. And you have uh, sporadic pyrotization. A couple samples. There's minimal amounts of pyrite, but I'm going to save a sample anyway. Just around the corner here, you have uh, an area about one meter wide, which is cutting horizontally across here. And again, you have that. Uh, Disseminated iron pyrite. I'm going to pull a little bit of a sample from this area here. There's a decent amount of iron pyrite here. I'm not seeing any other indications of other sulfides, but this is decently disseminated. And it's exposed over there as well. So this is a good 50 meters long between 20 centimeters and 1.25 meters wide. We're at about the extent we can get to. Just uh, right up here there's a culvert that's been taken out and then 100 meters past the road ends. There's a big ravine and creek down there. This logging road Obviously, there's another access point. You got to go down here and go all the way around this side of the mountain to get there. So I think that's it for now on this area. I wanted to show one last thing. We're down here at the camp showing. This is uh, historically the one of two areas that was ever explored 
on this property. It's a 75 meter wide zone. And I wanted to show you this. So this rock is very, very similar to what you're seeing up at the top of the mountain in sporadic areas. You have a gray silicus unit. And uh, I find that interesting.